here we are with the legendary Bob Arum. Sir, you always surprise me. You bring to California again to one of the biggest stars in boxing, Gilberto Sudro Ramirez, and of course Lomachenko. Yeah, I mean, it was great. I can't wait for April 12th at Staples. Tickets are going extraordinarily well. Uh, and uh, uh, we're going to have a full house. Uh, it's not only uh, Lomachenko and Zerto, but we got this Indian fighter, oh Vinjenda Singh. Yeah. And there's a, a big, big Indian population. We're selling so many tickets to Indians, it's amazing. <laughs> Sir, let me ask you this because I, I, I couldn't understand. Surdo is the first Mexican to conquer 168. Five successful defenses. Why is leaving 168? <laughs> well, he wants to uh, try himself at 175. Okay. So rather than put him in with one of the champions, where he might get embarrassed, we decided, okay, we'll give you a fight at 175 against a good contender, and then you decide whether you want to uh, go on at 175 or come back to 168. Because the problem with 168, he didn't feel that he had enough competition okay. around. But now, uh, with our deal with MTK Global, yeah. we have all of these European and English fighters, like a Billy Joe Sanders, wow. uh, ready to fight him. And so he has now big opportunities, whether it's at 168 or 175. But the decision is completely up to him. On Zerto. On Zerto. Sir, and then now let's talk about uh, Corolla. The people, sorry, they don't understand nothing about boxing. They say, come on. But we cannot forget that Krola is a, a veteran and it's very dangerous for Loma too. Krola is a very good fighter. I agree. He's a veteran. Can he beat Lomachenko? I doubt it. But when, with Lomachenko, we're seeing something unique. A fighter who has such great technical ability that he finds the way to beat his opponent. That in and of itself is the, worth the price of admission because Loma will fight Krola different from the way he fought Pedraza, different from the way he fought Linares. He'll fight him based on how he can really challenge Krola's style. And that is a beautiful thing to see. Totally agree. It let me ask you this, it's, it's true or it's only noise about the possibility that Teofimo Lopez fight against Lomachenko? For me, for now, it's crazy. But what is your opinion? Well, you say it's crazy for Teofimo to fight Loma, and I agree with you. It is crazy now. It's now you have yeah. to first see if Teofimo can be competitive with Lomachenko, no matter how good Tiafimo has looked up to now. So what we're doing is on April 20th on the Crawford card, yep. we're putting Tiafimo Lopez in with a top 10 lightweight, uh, the European champion from Finland, the rated number two or three in the world. Let's see how he handles a guy like that first. Then if he comes through, we can put him in maybe against the Pedraza, who gave uh, Loma hell, lost but gave him hell. So if if Loma then can beat a Pedraza, and then you can say, well, maybe he has a chance against Lomachenko, and next year you can do that fight and it'll be a big fight. But for me to do it now is a disservice to the fans, yeah. because I don't know whether it's realistically competitive yet. yet. I have a feeling that Tiafimo is something special, but I don't know for sure yet. Well, you're talking about Lomachenko, of course, it's not easy. Let me ask you two more questions. This is from my Mexican fellows. Uh, well, they asking about the possibility of Mike Garcia and Loma. The people want this fight, and you, you bring the best, the best fights ever. Okay. Mikey Garcia is fighting Spence. I don't think he does. I think Spence beats him. He's too okay. big. But Mikey is a terrific fighter. The problem that Mikey will have is can he 
having fought at 147, okay. can he get down to 135? Generally, if a fighter bulks up and fights two categories above yep. his weight, it's very hard for him to get down. So the first question is, can Garcia get down to 135? That's the question. If he can, and if everybody is convinced he can, then him and Lomachenko would be a spectacular fight. Let me close with this. Long, long time ago, you were having a conversation with one of my old bosses, Carlos Barba. Yeah. So uh, I read an article from the, some magazine of New York that when you realize what is Mexican market, Latin market, and it's funny because you were my boss when I was doing solo box of the captain, yeah. and Carlos Barba, too. So what is that memory that you have when you realize that the Latin people are the, are the I mean, the fans? <laughs> I was having drinks with <laughs> Carlos Barber, yeah. I remember at the Friars Club, and I was promoting in Madison Square Garden to Roberto Duran against Stevie Moore. Moore was the champion. And I wasn't selling any tickets. And I was spending money like mad on advertising. So Carlos Barber said, you're a fool. He said, you're spending all this money with the Anglos. You put that money or part of that money in with Hispanic media, and I guarantee you'll sell out Madison Square Garden. I said, Carlos, you're crazy. But he was right, we did it, and we sold out Madison Square Garden. This was 1983, I think. 83. Yeah. 83, and, that's correct. And the, the garden hadn't been sold out for boxing since Ali and Fraser Fort in 1974. Okay, sir, let me close with this. Last year, I asked you, uh, you can be the promoter of the year, and you mentioned, no, I'm the promoter of the century. <laughs> I, did I say that? Yeah. I must have been drunk. <laughs> sir, uh, it's not my, I mean, let me break the rules. You know, I love you so much. You're the best. I used to work with you, and it's always a pleasure to work with you. Thank you, I appreciate God it. God bless you. Thank it's always you. a pleasure. Thank you. Si te gustó nuestro contenido, suscríbete a nuestro canal. Y si no te gustó, también no puedes jugar boxeo.